So that's the first condition, they will recall. Then the other condition, this time around, those in the, let me wait for a while. Okay, then those in, um, so I've done the no music. I'm moving on to the music group. Those in the music group, this time around, I'll play music. So you could see that um, I had two different groups. The first group that I presented, they are the control group because when we were conducting experiment, they didn't, no music or whatsoever was played until right from the onset, no music was played. Then when we, I moved to the other group of um, students or participants, that's the experimental group. Music was played throughout the experiment, even when they were tasked to recall. So that's a typical true, um, that's a typical test only design. Music was played, then afterwards they were tasked to recall Yo. the dependent variable. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So that's what post-test only design is all about. Any question or clarification when it comes to post-test only? All right. So the next one is pre-test, post-test design. Pre-test post-test design. So the only difference between post-test design and pre-test post-test design is that with pre-test post-test, we first do a pre-test. We first do a pre-test. So let me use your colleague's um, experiment or the, your colleague um, example, whereby he indicated that we want to test the effectiveness of a new drug. So let's say the COVID-19 that um, is really happening, scientists or researchers have been able to come up with a drug to treat COVID-19. And here comes the case, we want to test the effectiveness of that drug. So first, they will try and get individuals 
with um, COVID-19. Okay. Then also get some group of individuals. I'm using it as just an, as, as an example. That doesn't mean it really happens in real life. They would also get some individuals with COVID-19. So we have about um, 20 or 30 individuals with COVID-19. Then what they do is that they will try and um, test the viral loads of all the participants. The viral loads of COVID-19. So that's the pretest that they've done. Then afterwards, they will group or they will divide the participant into two. Some of them will be given the drug. That's the COVID-19 new drug. Then 10 of them will not be given the COVID-19 new drug. It means 10 were given the new drug, 10 weren't given. Then again, they will test both of uh, participants in both conditions, their viral loads of COVID-19. So that's a typical pretest post-test. Their viral loads were tested before the drug was given to them. Then after the drug was given to some of them, their, their viral loads again were tested. So that's how pretest post-test design is. And you can see that definitely we have two groups, the control group and the experimental group in this scenario. Okay, so please, any question? Any question? And one, one key thing I would, re, I would re emphasize on when it comes to all the true experiments is that always they ensure that randomization is done before they um, assign participants into treatment group or control group. They, the researcher or the experimenter doesn't use his or her discretion to do that. I, I re echoed on this last, last two weeks. The researcher makes sure that random assignment is done. And right now you know how random assignment is done. I wouldn't re-emphasize on this. Okay, so any clarification? Sisi? Yeah, yes, sir. please sir. I want to know uh, the, the pre-test pre -test design. So does it mean that when the design we are going to uh, perform the uh, experiment, the, the treatment group and the control group, you first uh, pre-test the treatment group before the test and after test, you, you do the uh, pre-test or the, the, the treatment, you, you first treat both the uh, experiment, experiment, uh, the experiment group and the control group. I get you. Before. One thing you should know is that in doing pre-test or post-test, you are supposed to test all the participants in the two groups. You don't leave anyone behind. Okay. So you okay. test, if you are doing pre-test, you test both participants in the treatment and the control group. So like mm -hmm. the viral loads that I was talking about, all the patients, they have the viral loads. We've divided them into two. Some of them will not be receiving the drug, others will be receiving the drug. But before the drug is administered to any of the participants, we will test all the participants, whether you're in the control group or treatment group, we will test all of you, your viral okay. loads. Yeah. Then we will do some little ob observations. Okay. Administer the, the viral loads to participants in the treatment group. Then afterwards, we will then test all the participants, whether you are in the control group or treatment group. We will test all of you, your viral loads again. 
All right. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. Thank you. We're You're welcome. That last time. Thank you. Any other question or clarification? All right. So the next one is um, simple randomized participant design. Simple randomized participant design. And we normally see that this is um, related to between subject design, also known as independent measures design. So it means we have two groups, okay? Two groups, that's control group, and um, treatment group. Then we make sure that each individual is assigned to only one condition or each participant is assigned to only one condition. Or it could be that we have several um, treatment groups. So for instance, you want to take the, you want to test how alcohol influences or how marijuana influences people's um, recall. So some participants will be given one row of marijuana. Some participants would also be given two rows of marijuana. Other participants will not be given any marijuana. This doesn't mean um, in, in real experiment, this is how it is done. I'm just using it as an example for you because it is highly unethical for any experimenter to expose people to the use of marijuana. That's one thing. So when this is done, you could see that the experimental group have divided it into two groups, one row of marijuana and two rows of marijuana. Then we have our control group in there. So, and one thing is the participant that we've selected, every participant will be assigned to one of these three conditions. They will not be assigned to all the three conditions. That's how simple randomized participant design is done. All right. The repeated measures design is also similar to within steady design. It is the same as um, within study design. So it, it means that this time around, if I have three, three conditions, all the participants will be exposed to the three conditions. So it is more or less like the opposite of the simple randomized participant design. All right. Okay, so please, any question so far? Any question? Any question? Okay. If there are no questions, then I'm moving on. If there are no questions, then I'm moving on. So the next one has to do with complex or factorial designs. Factorial designs. This is one intriguing aspect, so I'll, I'll tell you to pay particular attention to this. So when it comes to complex or factorial designs, it means that we have more than one independent variable in play here. So you could see that um, the other um, test that we've been doing or experiment that we've been doing, we focus on only one independent variable, like the example that I gave, the effect of alcohol on record, the effect of marijuana on record, the effect of music on record. The independent variable here in all the experiments or the scenarios that I provided we have only one independent variable, music, marijuana, or alcohol. But in an instance whereby a researcher wants to 
test more independent variables on one dependent variable. So the researcher wants to find out how alcohol and marijuana affects recall. It means that the researcher has two independent variables, alcohol and marijuana. So that's a typical factorial design. So in marijuana or in, in marijuana, the, part, the researcher could divide the participants into maybe two groups. That's participants who would take marijuana or the participant who takes marijuana and participant who doesn't take marijuana. Then the same thing applies to alcohol. Participant who take marijuana and participant, sorry, participant who take alcohol and participant who doesn't take alcohol. So when that happens, then we call it two by two factorial design. I'll explain what it really means. Where is my annotation? Good. So let's say this is marijuana. Then this is alcohol. So the two by two here that you see here, it implies that we divided participants into two conditions for marijuana. That's no marijuana. Sorry, eraser. It means um, some took marijuana and some didn't take no marijuana. Then when it comes to alcohol too, we divided the participants into two groups, whereby some took alcohol and others didn't take any alcohol. So that's where the two by two comes from. So the, the two here, it means that this first two is for marijuana. It means we have marijuana, then under marijuana, we have two different conditions or groups. Then the second two that you find here is for alcohol. It means we have alcohol here, then under it, we have two different what? Conditions. Under the same, the same um, experiment, if we are testing for marijuana and alcohol on record, we can have maybe two by three factorial design. What it implies is that the first IV, so this one means IV number one, which is maybe alcohol or marijuana. Then this three here is for IV number two, which is say alcohol. So under IV number one, which I've renamed it marijuana, we are saying that it has two levels or it has two treatment. It means that we have divided the participant into two separate groups. That's some of them will take maybe one glass, one row of um, alcohol, sorry, one row of marijuana, and some of them wouldn't take no marijuana. So we have two groups. Then with alcohol, this time around, it's not two, but rather three, telling you that we have three groups. Some of them took one glass of alcohol, some took two glasses of alcohol, and others didn't take any alcohol. So when you see that, okay, they've made it three by four. Let me, let me pose this. Three by four factorial design. Who can give me what it really means? 
let's use the same experiment whereby we are testing the effect of marijuana on recall. I want to find out whether you truly grasp what I've done here. Okay, Samuel. Sir, please, it means that um, three, um, three people or three groups took the marijuana and four groups took the alcohol. Good. Or it can be the other way around because we don't know which, which of them until, until we do the real experiment or they tell us, it could be that, okay, three groups took alcohol or we assign three groups for alcohol and assign four groups for what? For marijuana. Yes, please. Yeah. But when they add an extra level, like three by four by two, what does it really mean? How many independent variables are in play here? When they make it three by four by two, how many independent variables? Please three. Three, thank you. Because you realize that when it was three by four, I told you, the three years stand for IV number one. The four years stand for IV number two. Then the two year will stand for IV number three. So it means that when they make it three by four by two or two by two by two, it should tell you that they are testing three different independent variables. So it could be that they are testing the effect of alcohol, marijuana, amphetam and amphetamine on record. But in each IV, we have different groups. So it means IV number one has three different groups. IV number two ha has what? Four different groups. Or sometimes they wouldn't say groups, but rather levels. When you, when you see the word level, it means group. Then IV number three has two levels or groups. So that's how factorial design is all about. And I'm really, really um, emphasizing on this because you can go through your past questions. These things normally come to the top. The factorial design, you can easily tell, um, bring maybe two by four factorial design and tell you how many IVs are in there, how many levels can you find? Okay. Okay, so I think within your slides, they've done some few of them, so we can go through it and see. So example, two by two design, it means it has two IVs with each two levels. So I told you when you see two levels, it means it has two groups, levels mean groups. So it means each of the IV has two groups. But let's see two by three design, it means we have two independent variables, but IV number one has two groups, which is two levels. Then IV number two has three groups, which is the same as three levels. Then two by eight, the same thing. We have two independent variables, but IV number one has two groups or two levels. Then IV number two has two groups or, sorry, IV number two has eight groups or eight levels. Then let's check two by two by four. It means that this time around, we have three separate independent variables. Then IV number one has two levels. IV number two has two levels. Then IV number three has four levels. So that's how you deduce. So please, any question? Any question? is called a Hey, Godwin, would you please, would you please mute your mic?
Okay. So one thing, Kwesi. Yeah, sir. Um, a bit confused. I just want to know with the factorial design you are just talking about. Mm -hmm. The only I'm trying to say, um, I want to know if with that one maybe you can use it to check, like. Okay, let me put this first. What's the difference between the factorial and the other ones? Is it because this one enables you to have two independent variables being tested separately at the same time or what? Yes, yes. I think the other experiment that we did, if you realize the scenarios that I was given, we're testing only one independent variable on a dependent variable. But with factorial design, we have more than one independent variable on a dependent variable, and it is tested at the same time. We test them once and for all. So for instance, I want to test the effect of alcohol and marijuana on what? On, on recall. So it means I have two independent variables within my study, which is marijuana and recall or marijuana and alcohol, and I'm testing participants recall on these um, substances. Okay. And also, I want to know if it's also, if it's also used to, I don't know how to put this, I don't know if I should use. Kwesi? Hello? Um, Kwesi, it seems you are off or something. Oh, all right. Wait, intensity. You see some day rules for test. If maybe the person. Question: Would you please um start because um your mic was off and all that. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, okay, sure. I said also I wanted to know if with the same factorial design, let's say with the two by three, two by four where two IVs are involved, but one has just two groups and the other one has four groups and the four groups has maybe one group taking one roll of wheat, the other group has two roll of wheat, the other group takes three roll of wheat. If the increment, if it's also used to check as to whether the group giving three rows recall faster and better than the group giving one roll or what, I wanted to know. Not, ne not necessarily. If it also considers not that. Not necessarily. The number of levels doesn't really let us know whether one will recall better than the other. Nope. Not necessarily. Okay. Okay, sure thing. Welcome. Okay. So the next one is um, main effects. So it means that when it comes to factorial design, we have two main effects. We have two effects. That's main effect and interaction effect. Main effect and interaction effect. So the first one is main effect. With main effect, we want to find out how the independent variable directly affects the dependent variable. So remember, I said with factorial design, we have more than two dependent. Two. We have more than two independent variable. So let's say our two independent variables are marijuana and alcohol. And we are testing them how it affects memory. So when we take marijuana, we want to find out how it directly affects memory and how alcohol directly affects memory. So it means if you have two IVs, your main effects, you have how many? Two main effects. If you have three main IVs, then it means that your main effect will be three, three. Because main effect helps us to understand how each of the independent variables affects the dependent variable. Okay, 
Then the next one has to do with interaction effects. Interaction effects. With interaction effects, our focus is on how the groups affect each other. How the groups or the levels or the effect existing between the various um, levels or groups. So let's say um, the same mar marijuana and alcohol and alcohol. We have two separate groups. So it's two by two factorial design. We have two separate groups. So we want to find out how group number one here affects group number one for alcohol and how group number one for marijuana affects group number one for group number two for alcohol. Then how group number two for marijuana also affects group number one in that order. So we want to find out how the levels or the groups existing between our IVs, they affect each other. Then we call it interaction effects. So for us to get to the interaction effect for two by two factorial design, we multiply the number of levels that we have. So it will be two times two, which will be four. So it means that with two by two factorial design, the interaction effect that we have will be four interaction effects. If it is two by three, then it means that our interaction effect will be six because you multiply them. If it is two by four by two, then our interaction effect will be 16 because we will multiply all of them. Two by two times four is eight, eight times two, 16. So it means we will have 16 interaction effects. So in, a, in an examination, they could easily ask you, they can um, indicate this, two by three by four and asks you several questions under it. How many IVs? So my question to the class, we have less than five minutes. So let's be snappy about this. The question has to do with um, two by three by four factorial design. My question is how many IVs can you find in this? And also how many main effects can you find? And how many interaction effects can you also find? Okay, Samuel. Okay, so with the IVs, we have three IVs and three main effects. Okay. Then the interaction, with the interaction effects, it is six, um, 24. Good, good, exactly. Why are we saying we have three, three main IVs? Because I told you, the two year stands for IV number one. Then the three stands for IV number two. Then the four year stands for IV number three. So it means we have three main IVs. Then under each IV, IV number one, it means it has two levels. IV number three has three main levels. Then IV number four has four different levels or four different groups. Then what of the interaction? The interaction I told you, the interaction has to do with how each of the IVs affect the DV. So it means since we have three independent variables, it means that we'll find out how each of the independent variable affects the DV. So it means we have three separate main effects. And I say with the interaction effect, what you do is that it has to do with the total number of levels that we have here. So it means we'll have 24. You can easily multiply this. That's two times three will give you six. 
then six times four will give you 24. So it means we will have 24 interaction effects in there. All right. So please, any question? Any question when it comes to factorial design? Any question? Okay, Samuel, please be snappy. Samuel, please go ahead. All right. So I think it's by Samuel. So was the points you are making, they the answer it. So please carry on. Would you, would you repeat what you said? Because uh, when you were um, asking the question, your, your line was off or something, or you were muted. So I couldn't hear you. Okay, I was saying that when we are talking of the the number of IVs and the number and then the number of interaction, I wanted to answer that one, but my colleague has already oh, okay. given the answer. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. So if there are no questions or clarification, then that will be the end of today's um discussion. Okay, but for for a question I had. Because I was having a network interaction. So if you wouldn't mind, the non effect, non experimental effect, you well. So your your network is really bad. I could barely hear what you are saying. There are some breaks whenever you you, you speak. So if you could reoccur on what you said. Okay. What, what I was saying is that when you were explaining the non experimental effect uh, design, I was having this problem, so I couldn't hear you well. And I wish if you can explain it a bit for me. Right, non experimental effect design. I don't remember saying anything like that. Yeah, there was a point. I had known a terminal. I took it somewhere. I have today's discussion. I've never talked about any experimental effect yet. Okay, is that uh, the the pre post the pre post design uh, design? Yeah. That's I jotted that one there. It was about you said you made mention about all the all the true experimental design do has randomization. So, but I didn't hear that point well. That's what I wanted to do. I said all the what? Oh. All the true experiments. All the true experiments do randomize. And I didn't hear that okay. side. Okay. Well. What I said was that. When it comes to true experiments, you are supposed to do randomization, that's random assignment. And I, you know how random assignment okay. is done. So I said with true experiments, since you need a treatment group and a control group, the researcher doesn't use his or her discretion to um, assign participant, but rather needs to do random assignment. And you know how it is done when doing random assignment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So if there are no other questions, then um that'll be the end. Thank you, Stay. Thank you too. Okay, sure. See you next weekend. Thank you very much.